Do you know I can move a paper clip just by thinking about it? Watch this. Look at that. Just just my mind pulling that paper clip. Did you guys believe I could really do that? So we're going to learn a little bit more about magnets today in the magnetic field. The magnetic field is the area around the magnet where the magnetic force is felt. So this magnet right here is on this device here that can pivot and just turn pretty freely. And if I spin this around and I let go of it, notice that it points in the same direction that north points upwards. And if I take it and I let go, it does the same thing. The reason it does that is because it's aligning itself up with the Earth's magnetic field. It's lining up in the same direction as the Earth's magnetic field or parallel. So any magnet that's able to spin freely is going to follow the Earth's magnetic field or another magnet if the other magnet is close enough. So this magnet's hanging on a string and it's following the same direction as the other magnet. If I spin it a little bit and I let go, it's slowly going to rest where it used to be. Now. A compass needle works the same way. So here's a compass needle right there. And that's just going to follow the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. It's a magnetized needle right here that can spin freely. Now if I turn the compass, nothing changes about that direction. You know, turning this doesn't do anything. It's just following the Earth's magnetic field. So the end that points to the north hemisphere of the world is considered the north pole of a magnet. Now how do those react? with other magnets. I'm going to bring another North Pole near this North Pole and it repels it away. Or if I bring a South Pole near this other South Pole, it also repels it. So light poles are repelling each other. And if I have opposite poles, I'm going to bring this white and this South near the North. It gets connected, so they get attracted. So the law of poles is almost like the law of electric charge. That light poles, just like like charges, are going to repel each other. And opposite poles, just like opposite charges, are going to attract each other. So if you notice right now, all these compass needles are pointing in the same direction. That's because they're following the Earth's magnetic field. But if I bring another magnet closer, it can affect these compass needles. So I'm going to bring that magnet close there and just use one of these to use to try to get a better sense of what this magnetic field is doing. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is put dots in several places here and get the compass needle to point to those dots. And so I want it to point to this, say this top dot right there. I'm going to draw a dot on the other side. So right now I see the compass needle is pointing in this direction. And I'm going to point it to the last dot I made and put a dot on the other side. So at that time it was pointing in this direction and finally in this direction. Now this compass needle is always pointing to the south pole. So these are all going in this direction. Let's say I start right here. I'm going to do the same thing. I just keep seeing what direction this needle points at in these spaces. And so right now it was going in this direction all those times, pointing to the South Pole each time. How about right here? Now it's pointing like this. Now it's starting to go like this. Finally, right about back here. So I'm going to do this until it either goes off the paper like these two, or this one seemed to curve back to the magnet. These were all pointing to the South Pole. Now I'm going to continue doing this to get a bunch of lines here and get a good sketch or good idea of what the magnetic field is doing all around that magnet. So this is the image I get. We can kind of test that out just by or verifying this just by using a few compasses all at the same time to see that it's following the line that I have drawn. So these lines 
are basically showing me the direction of the magnetic field here. Now these actually have directions. The magnetic field points from the north to the south. So I should draw some arrows here to show the direction of this magnetic field. So it goes away from the north and to a south. Also notice that if I tried to start a magnetic field line right here, let me try that. So here's this compass needle. There's no way I can get that to point to that point, which shows me something about this magnetic field on this magnet. The very first one I could probably draw is maybe right here where I could get it to point to that point. Let's follow this one along. Now it's went in this direction. Now it's over here and it looks like it would go back to the magnet. So this is a little one here. So now what you want to do is pause this video and make a sketch of what you see here. This is the magnetic field around a magnet using a compass needle to show us the directions of the field. Be sure to sketch the magnet itself and label the poles like we have here, the south and the north pole. So draw that all out on your paper. Another way we could get a view of the magnetic field is to use some iron filing. So I'm going to place a piece of paper with this magnet label and put it right where the magnet's here. And iron filings are just basically pieces of iron. If I were to look at those under a microscope, they're not circular though, they're, they're little shavings of iron, kind of like this shape, which is exactly like a compass needle. So if I put some iron in a magnetic field, it will become magnetized itself and it can act like a little compass needle by trying to follow the direction of the magnetic field here. So if I just sprinkle some of these iron filings around here, hopefully you see how they're lining up in certain directions. I'm gonna tap the paper a little bit, maybe help them line up a bit more. I'm gonna draw a few lines with you and you're gonna continue drawing more lines on your own. It's kind of like playing connect the dots. I'm gonna start one right here, and if I see this line here, I look and it seems like it starts curving around and eventually curving back to the magnet here. Let's pick one here. If I see this, where does that seem to lead? It seems to go about in this direction and then I'm not sure where. Um, let's do one more together. Say I start right here. It looks like it's going in this direction. So you don't wanna just draw a bunch of dots and dashes. You wanna draw some smooth straight lines or curved lines. So overall I have these three lines that I thought this was representing. The uh, iron filings here and you wanna draw uh, probably about 10 lines. Continue this all around the magnet, even around the poles here and Pause this video, take some time to uh, look that back over. I'm gonna re-sprinkle this on here. So you're gonna pause this video and draw what direction you think these magnetic fields are going. So pause the video and put that in your notes. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with two magnets with unlike poles in north, near, or south. I'm gonna sprinkle some iron filings around here and you're going to sketch what you see like we did the last one mostly focusing on between the two magnets. So what you want to do is try to draw some field lines you see going around here, but also around the magnets also. So pause this video if you need to. Take a good look and sketch what you see. Okay, and the last one is two light poles together. So I have two north poles underneath this paper near each other. I'm gonna sprinkle some filings so you can see how that works here. And you're going to sketch what you think these field lines are doing here. Again, put some lines all around the magnet, at least 10 lines, and pause the video if you need to and sketch what you see here. All right, so that should be it for the lab. This is not part of the lab, but just out of curiosity, you know, some people think magnets attract any kind of metal. So here's a paper clip. I'm gonna drop that paper clip in. Yeah, it attracts this paper clip pretty well. 
Um, does it attract every kind of metal? Well, let's see. Here, here's an aluminum can. Uh, no, it doesn't attract that at all. So let's see some other things. You know, here's some coins here. So here, here's a copper penny. If I put that on there, that nah, just falls right down. How about how about a quarter, American quarter there? Uh, put it on there, and nah, it just falls right down too. How about uh, a nickel? No. How about uh, this is a Canadian nickel right there. Oh, yeah, that actually works. Well, nickel is actually a metal that does get attracted to magnets, but American nickels actually do not have much nickel metal in them. But Canadian nickels have enough nickel metal, the element nickel in them, to actually get attracted to a magnet. Another kind of interesting thing is that here's a dollar and here's some pretty powerful magnets here. If I, if I do that really carefully, let me stop that, it actually attracts to the dollar a bit. Dollars actually have magnetic ink. That's one way to tell if the dollar is fake by going through a vending machine. They can detect if it has that magnetic ink on there. So, so far there were only two things attracted. This Canadian nickel, because of the nickel metal, a paper clip. And that actually is because it has a lot of iron in the paper clip. Steel is mostly iron, so steel would attract to a magnet. And the third thing would be cobalt. I don't have a piece of that. Those are the three things that can be attracted to a magnet, either iron, nickel, or cobalt. So here's the periodic table of elements, all the elements that we have. And these are arranged by the number of protons and even with their properties. So if I look at iron, the symbol of iron is actually Fe. There's iron, here's cobalt, the next one, and here's nickel, the next one down. So all these three, are the only three that can be attracted to a magnet. 